What's going on everyone? Welcome to Texas Sonic Channel. If you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. Now before we get started, wanted to say huge thanks to P2R Power Rev Racing. They have an amazing customer service. They gave me a pretty decent discount on these um, so I could share them and show you how to install them today. So um, we'll just get straight into it. These are CNC ported. They are really nice construction, really nice design. And I will be putting these on the uh, engine over here. As you can see, this basically goes just like this. But I will show you how to take these off of this engine here. Yes, I went ahead and pulled the engine out um, because I have to do the clutch. The clutch is in terrible shape, so I went ahead and pulled the engine out. I went through the top. Everyone goes through the bottom, but this method going through the top was way easier on this particular uh, Acura TL. The bolts were not coming loose on the subframe, and then I realized how much had to be removed steering-wise um, and suspension and all kinds of stuff. So this way it was a lot easier just going up through the top. So I'm going to show you on this one how to take the intake manifold off and then get these lower runners out. Um, and then I will be sending the lower runners that are on here to back to them, back to P2R, and they will make another set of these um, and give me my core back. So. Um, huge shout out again, P2R. Link is in the description. Definitely go subscribe to their YouTube channel. And uh, I'll also link their store so you can actually check out their products. They have a lot of amazing products and I will definitely be getting more from them soon. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and set you guys up on the tripod. We're going to tear this down. We're going to pretend this is still in the car. Um, and then I'll show you how to take it apart. So here we go. Okay, so we're going to start with this vacuum line over here. It's obviously really simple, just undo that vacuum line. Moving over to this side, we have a vacuum line here. You can just undo it from the bottom section and uh, disconnect this plug right here. But for the sake of you guys seeing the top, we'll just undo the top. Just remember to undo the bottom one. Or you can just undo the top one and undo the 10 millimeter bolts, take this piece off. But I'm not gonna take that off since it's disconnected on the bottom side. This piece up here is a vacuum line runs directly to your engine mount, but since I have solid engine mounts, it's not hooked up. So that's not needed right now, but you will disconnect the connector if you have this uh, solenoid up top. So now that we've got that, we'll go over here. There's a connector. Just remove that. Pretty simple. Then you have 12 10 millimeter bolts up top. So I'm going to undo those real quick. This has a gasket all around. Inspect that while it's out. Make sure it's all good. All right, so inside we have seven 12 millimeter bolts here, and then one 12 millimeter nut on this side, and one 12 millimeter nut on this side. So we're just gonna go ahead and undo that real quick. All right. Now we've got all these here, we'll remove those. And pull this straight up. All right, so right here we have the gasket. We'll just put that out of the way. And we have all the injector clips. The clips here are broke, but not a big deal. Make sure nothing falls down in there, especially if this engine is in your car, not outside of your car. Okay, now this part, there's typically a power steering pump right here. If you remove that, you'll have access to this 10 millimeter bolt right here. Go ahead and remove that. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier for what comes next. Now you're gonna need an eight millimeter uh, socket so that we can get to these bolts that you can't really see. They're right here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. All right, on this part right here, what I like to do is I like to wiggle the fuel rail with the injectors like that. Get a pry bar, 
and carefully pry up while wiggling. You don't want to break them. Okay, this came out pretty, pretty easy. We're gonna do the same to the other side. Okay, now go ahead and do that to this side. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, I'm gonna go over here, carefully undo the knock sensor, and then this wiring here needs to come out of the way. Don't forget to undo this cam sensor up front carefully. Okay, so there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. You'll want to remove to get this uh, knock sensor connector out of the way as well. And we've got a 12 millimeter bolt here, a 12 millimeter nut here, 12 millimeter nut here, 12 millimeter bolt here, and then there's one hiding right back here. So. We're gonna go ahead and undo those. We're gonna remove the front runner first. It makes it easier. Then we'll have access to get to these ones a little bit easier. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, now that we've got it to this point, we're gonna take the pry bar and gently pry up on it from both sides. Now that it's loose, we can just wiggle it out. Just like that. Now we have access to these bolts using the impact. All right, now that I got it off, we're gonna use the dial caliper here. It's not gonna be super accurate, but it'll get us close enough numbers. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the inside here. Okay, 44.0. That's what these runners are here. And on the P2R, 44.0. Considerably bigger definitely will flow more air which means more horsepower So uh, we're gonna go ahead and install these on the other engine not the engine. I just pulled them off of and uh, I'll show you the rest of that Before we install it. I wanted to show you I got brand new felpro gaskets I couldn't find any thermal gaskets that go on this side But I did order a spacer with two thermal gaskets from p2r. I just don't have them currently for this video um, They will go in the middle right here so we're gonna go ahead and get started also real quick knock sensors right here might as well replace it while you're in there because they like to break uh, mine didn't luckily on this engine but they do like to break every single j series except for this one has broke off whenever i take the intake out and i go to try to remove this connector clip they always break off so good time to do that and they're pretty inexpensive so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right, we're gonna go ahead and install this one first.
Okay, I want to show you this real quick. We have the six factory injectors decapped. So they will flow more than 270 cc's. They should flow around 350, 370. Um, we will flow test them and we have a video that we're going to be working on AGN's YouTube channel. Link is in the description. Go over there and subscribe. Turn the bell icon on to get notified when that video drops. Uh, these we already did. So I was going to put them in while I'm here. These are the other injectors. You can see they're completely stock and these are stock ones decapped. So super easy to replace. They have these little metal clips that go right here. You just pop those off, pull the injectors out, put the new ones in, and you're good to go. Just wanted to show you that real quick. All right, about to put the fuel injectors in. As you can see, I swapped over the wrinkle red valve covers from the uh, engine that was originally in the car and uh, cleaned them up a little bit. So now I'm just gonna install these. All right, now that we got it to this point, we're gonna need to get the studs out of the uh, stock lower runners. So I'll show you that real quick. Okay, so on these stock runners right here, we have to remove these studs. I basically just use vice grips to get them loose. Um, not going on the threads, but going in the center section. And just get these out. You're gonna need to put these in the new runners. Just do that to both of them. All right, now that we've got the studs out of the stock lower runners, we're gonna go ahead and put them in um, this set of runners. One on this side, one on the other side. Then we're gonna put the gasket on. Now, typically, at this point, I would be putting in the spacer with the two thermal gaskets, but it's not here yet, so I'm just gonna reassemble it like this, and then we can put it on once it comes. It's not very hard. Make sure to tighten these down pretty snug. All right, once you get both of those in, I like to set all of the bolts through, as you can see. And then we can just guide it down. Now all the bolts are lined up. Just go ahead and put the 12 millimeter nuts on those studs. Then tighten everything down. I don't know the proper torque specs for these, but every time I've tightened them down with the uh, Harbor Freight Impact and got one or two Ugga Duggas, it's been pretty good. I just don't want to over tighten them. Um, definitely check for proper torque. Uh, you want to make sure these are torqued properly. I personally have never had an issue. Do as I say, not as I do guys. Um, I'm kind of an idiot, so. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the top cover back on. All right, now using movie magic, I'm gonna make them all tight. And there it is, now they're all tightened down. Uh, we can go ahead and hook up the other hoses and stuff like that. And if your engine is still in the vehicle, which most likely it is, um, you will have to make sure to reconnect the throttle because uh, I didn't have a throttle on this whenever I showed you how to disassemble it. Basically just undo the connector clip you're good to go. Um, I'm gonna have to re-disassemble this because I still have to put the wiring harness in, but I wanted to show you what it looked like, how to reassemble it, it's pretty simple. But uh, yeah, definitely have a lot more coming to the channel. This engine over here, which is the one that came out of the car, super great condition. 
uh, well maintained so I'm super happy about that this engine is gonna be a really good base to build on and that's the whole reason of me even pulling this out well the transmission obviously had to come out for the clutch so I figured do it all at once swap in another good running engine with a warranty on it while I build the good running engine that was in the vehicle because I know how well the taking care of this engine was made 301 horsepower on 3 psi so I mean that's a really good engine um, so yeah can't wait to put this one in there and this is the whole reason we pulled it all apart was the clutch is toast uh, obviously when I made more power it started acting up a little bit more um, so we'll see what happens once I get the solid clutch in. It's a stage three. I thought it was a stage two. It's actually a stage three six puck. Um, it's through grip force and it's a uh, dual mass flywheel like this from Luck or L-U-K, Luke, uh, whatever. So I'll definitely uh, be putting that back in and then getting this put back to that transmission and get it back in the car and then head to the dyno. But I have the decapped injectors in, so it should flow more. I'll have to go through in the tune and change all of that uh, for the injectors. It's pretty simple, though. I type in what CC these are. These are the 270 CC. And then decapped, they should flow about 370 CC. Uh, we will actually test all this on Eric's YouTube channel, AGN YouTube channel. Link is in the description. Definitely go subscribe and turn the bell icon on to get notified of every upload. Because uh, we're definitely going to be posting on there on how to decap injectors and how much they flow after decapping. We'll have one that's stock and then a decapped one and we'll flow test them side by side. So it'll be pretty cool. That's coming soon, hopefully. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and package these up and send them back to P2R. That way they can make some more awesome CNC machined lower runners. So a huge shout out to them. Again, great customer service and they really know their stuff. So uh, links in the description, go subscribe to their channel, show them some love, and uh, share the videos around if you think these videos will help someone. But I need to get off here, I gotta go eat and do some other things, edit this video. So if you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe and turn the bell icon on to get notified of every upload. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get off here, so I'll see you guys in the next one. As I like to say, God bless, stay safe, stay awesome.